Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Tuesday the 15th of July 2025. There's a lot of detail to get through today. Massive weather systems forecast across the southern half of Australia with two big systems that have caught my eye for southwestern and southeastern Australia coming through in about a week and two weeks time respectively. Uh, plenty of severe weather is expected. So all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. And if you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing uh, and leave a like on the video while you're at it. But let's get stuck straight into things today over in the southeast of the nation where we do have some rainfall moving through South Australia, in fact extending into New South Wales, if you will, this morning. We're looking at some healthy rainfall accumulations in some drought impacted areas, especially through the Eyre Peninsula of South Australia, through the northern half of the agricultural regions of South Australia as well, and then extending in towards New South Wales. Overnight falls as heavy as 25 millimetres have been reported through the northern half of the Eyre Peninsula, and in fact a couple of drops of rainfall have made it as far north as Murray and Lake Eyre. Rainfall has also been uh, pretty widespread through the eastern... Uh, the western half rather of New South Wales with falls extending as far south as about Mildura on the border between uh, New South Wales and Victoria through Broken Hill and then up towards Tipperbura into the northeastern part of the state as well. So we have had some good rainfall accumulations uh, quite widespread overnight and it's all been driven by this cut-off low pressure system that's moved through into South Australia and is now sliding across South Australia. The rainfall isn't anything of concern, in fact it's just good news basically for these regions. It's much needed rainfall, for, at, especially at this time of the year, and it's providing this good soaking rainfall for these drought impacted communities. So again, it's just fantastic uh, rainfall all around and we're just loving to see, uh, loving that we're, this is what we're looking at on the radar imagery for these drought impacted communities. The showers will move in towards the northern part of New South Wales throughout the course of today. If they're not already there, uh, they will weaken off throughout the course of today as well. And we're expecting rainfall to clear out of New South Wales by around midnight tonight and then move out into the Tasman Sea where a low pressure system is expected to develop well offshore from New South Wales. This one will go on to impact New Zealand uh, around midweek and this one could cause a few problems, especially for the North Island, expecting quite a strong low pressure system out of that. So the good news just continues. These East Coast low type systems or these low pressure systems that get themselves offshore from New South Wales, like we're going to see tonight into tomorrow morning that have the capacity or have the means to become east coast lows for new south wales if conditions were different they're remaining well offshore from new south wales and they're sliding out to sea and they're not becoming a problem for the saturated new south wales coastline so the rainfall is happening where we need it and it's staying away from exactly where we do not need rainfall that being queensland and new south wales just fantastic stuff and i'm very happy to be the one able to report on this because this is just great news for our farming communities even more good news coming in Wednesday afternoon, another cold front expected to approach from the west and will likely see some showers extending as far north up as Sejuna and the Air Peninsula in South Australia. A good line of rainfall extending south of Adelaide through early Thursday morning and that'll make itself into the western half of Victoria through early Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon. About five millimetres possible for both Adelaide and Melbourne through Thursday. Showers will be heavier across the western coast of Tasmania or up to 40 millimetres as possible Thursday morning, tending to snowfall onto some of the higher peaks and then rainfall clearing through Thursday afternoon and evening a few showers showers then expected to slide up into the northeastern corner of New South Wales, but I'll get to that in a separate part of the forecast update much later on. Moving things forward through Friday, another low pressure system expected to develop from the west. This one will pack a punch, but mainly for the west coast of Tasmania. Approaching through Saturday and into Sunday, we're expecting a pretty good whack out of this system here, at least 30 to 50 millimetres to the west coast of Tasmania. Some good snowfall accumulations as well. But because of the northerly winds that it's going to drag down, conditions are going to remain a little bit more milder for the mainland. We're expecting a few showers here and there through uh, Saturday morning across the coastal regions of South Australia, south of Adelaide, through Warrnambool, and then across towards Melbourne in Victoria. But we won't be seeing too much in the way of rainfall, a couple of millimetres at the most, and no snowfall expected across the higher peaks. Showers will continue across parts of Tasmania through Sunday. A couple of uh, days of dry weather expected on both Monday and Tuesday for both Victoria and Tasmania, but a big weather system approaching from the west once again on Tuesday, and we'll see some heavy showers through South Australia's south coast, and that will extend in towards Victoria through the 22nd and then in towards the 23rd of July. Heavy rainfall expected throughout the night of the 22nd and then out towards the 23rd of July. That is system number one on the big time cold front forecast. This will drag in a lot of rainfall, a lot of moisture, a lot of warm air as well ahead of the system as well, so we might even see some some convective thunderstorms ahead of the cold front or when that cold front does come through we'll likely see some heavy showers associated with it but plenty of rainfall expected nonetheless and then a strong air mass coming in from the west through the 24th of July this will likely provide more showers and some snowfall for Tasmania and the higher peaks through Victoria some more showers also expected through South Australia and Victoria on the 24th and the 25th of July rainfall will ease off for a couple of days and then more rainfall coming through after the 27th of July another strong weather system expected and this one's going to be more of a complex low type situation We'll have to look at this in a future forecast update because the details will be quite murky on this for the next couple of days at least. 
But the key takeaways to take away from the forecast right now is we've got at least four or five separate weather systems coming through. That strong one coming through this coming weekend, Sunday out to about Tuesday, the 20th out to the 22nd of July. There have been some pretty big changes on the forecast modelling. We were once expecting a very significant low pressure system to slide up into the Great Australian Bight and provide a pretty meaty impact winter weather-wise towards southeastern Australia. That's no longer the case anymore. We are expecting some rainfall to come through and definitely some snowfall, especially for Tasmania, which are expecting a pretty good, I guess, hiding out of the system here, especially Sunday afternoon, clearing Sunday, and then again Monday and Tuesday. But because this low-pressure system isn't riding as far north as we once expected, and in fact, through Tuesday and Wednesday, it makes that dive further south, we're going to see less severe weather across southeastern Australia, and this front is likely to be a little bit less severe than what we were expecting, but still bringing a similar quantity of rainfall to what the forecast was suggesting yesterday, especially for Tasmania, but also for Victoria and South Australia as well. In other news, it's not really expected to be anything too crazy. We're not expecting a wild severe weather outbreak. And you can see on the rainfall accumulation forecast here, whilst the numbers are good, we're not seeing anything really uh, alarming at this point in time. Just disregard this stuff here over in New South Wales. Again, I'll touch on this in the later part of the forecast update, but also the forecast very murky on that right now. I don't want to be alarming people. But for South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, I'm not seeing anything crazy in the way of rainfall accumulations. All in all, it's just a very healthy looking winter's week forecast across the southeast corner of the nation. And it's the same deal with the wind accumulation as well. So this uh, is the highest estimated wind gust over the selected period of time, so pretty much out to the end of July. We're only looking at wind gusts between 100 to 110 kilometres an hour for the mainland coastline and then up to about 130 kilometres an hour for the Tasmanian coastline. Whilst that does sound quite strong, business as usual for this time of the year, nothing too crazy. So this is, again, just more good news. We're looking at cold fronts coming through, but none of which are expected to be anything too crazy or anything too severe. It is just fantastic news all around at this point in time. But just back to the rainfall forecast here, 14 day rainfall accumulations between 25 to 50 millimetres of the Air Peninsula coastline, between 10 to 25 millimetres through the agricultural regions, through the Air Peninsula, on top of the rainfall that they've had today, that is a good deal for them. Adelaide looking at about 50 millimetres, potentially up to 100 millimetres of both Robe and Mount Gambia into Victoria, between 10 to 25 millimetres through the western half of the state, that could reach as high as 40 millimetres along the southwestern coast. Melbourne looking at up to about 25 millimetres, higher accumulations pushing closer to 50 millimetres expected into the Victoria. Victorian Alps, and they'll cross the border of into the Snowy Mountains in New South Wales. Much heavier rainfall accumulations, though, expected for the western coast of Tasmania. Falls could be as high as 250 millimetres. I know these forecast models can get them, uh, the rainfall quite wrong, especially on the lower side of things. So we're definitely looking at rainfall accumulations that could be quite heavy across the west coast. They're built for this type of stuff, so again, flooding is obviously not a concern, and they could really do with the rainfall as well. They're definitely starting to get quite dry over there. Hobart looking at between 10 to 15 millimetres over the next 14 days, most of which will come through in that drizzly type stuff. So again, good rainfall coming through. Business as usual, the weather seen across South Southeastern Australia. I'm not seeing anything too crazy, which is good to see at this point in time. We were at one point a little bit concerned about the, the system coming through this weekend, but it looks like it's going to take that dive far enough south as to where it's not going to be too much of a problem. And like I said, with these systems now having that southerly bias where they kind of parallel the Australian coastline and then dive down south of Tasmania, that does a good job at dragging a lot of warm, moist air from the north. And that's why we're not looking at too much in the way of snowfall accumulations, even for this time of the year across interior parts of uh, the Snowy Mountains and then through the Victorian Alps. The good snowfall is kind of reserved only for the Tasmanian highlands. I've discussed this in previous forecast updates, but the European forecast can be a terrible model to use for snowfall, especially through uh, some of the lower elevations. It does a pretty good job, reasonably speaking, for the higher elevations. So I do believe that the forecast of up to about 15 centimetres of snow throughout the next two weeks across the high country of Victoria and New South Wales is an accurate number to put on it. But of course, disregard all of this stuff here. We're not going to be seeing snow through agricultural regions of New South Wales. But it does illustrate my point. Good uh, snowfall accumulations expected across the high peaks of Tasmania. Not so good snowfall accumulations expected for Victoria and New South Wales just because of that warmer air that's going to be dragged in. But we have had a bit of a reduction in the severity of the forecast uh, uh, storms coming through across the southeast corner of the nation. And I think that that is a trend that is going to continue. I think the severity of these storms is going to get routinely knocked down on these forecast models. And it's just going to be stock standard business as usual winter weather for the southeast corner of the nation. Let's head over west now and talk about stuff happening over in the southwest corner of Australia because if the storms over in the southeast are getting less intense, they're definitely getting more intense over into the southwest. We have a strong one coming through this weekend. It's not expected to be anything mind-boggling, but we are looking at a decent storm coming through this weekend. One that's going to come through tomorrow morning by the looks of things, a few showers expected across the south coast, some of which could make it up into the Perth metro area around rush hour tomorrow morning. They should clear after about lunchtime, and then it looks like it's going to be dry Wednesday afternoon throughout Thursday as well. In fact, it's kind of the only 
rainy day this week where there's no rainfall forecast. A weak cold front rushing up against the south coast on Friday, and it looks like that will make it just in time for the evening rush hour Friday night for the Perth metro area. A couple of drops of rainfall forecast, but again, nothing too crazy. Rainfall will steer clear of the Perth metro area through Saturday. It will return again on Sunday, though, especially into the afternoon and the evening hours, and we're looking at a big cold front coming through Sunday night and into Monday morning. This one will pack a punch, and it actually looks like it's going to develop a separate low pressure system, different to the actual low pressure system driving this frontal system here, somewhere around the southwest corner of WA, and that will likely result in some very heavy rainfall accumulations coming through Sunday night into Monday morning. This is going to be one of those classic systems that we more often see in May or June as opposed to July. By about this time of the year, the severity of the rainfall on these fronts tends to die down because the Lewin current doesn't run as warm at this time of the year. But considering we still have very much above average sea temperatures offshore from Western Australia, southwest, we're going to be seeing some heavier than usual rainfall, heavier than expected rainfall from this weather system here. And that's likely to result in some pretty heavy rainfall accumulations, reasonably speaking, for the southwest corner of the state. Sunday night, we could be looking at up to 50 millimetres through parts of the southwest. Clearing through Monday morning, a few showers still expected here and there. It will be cold Monday and Tuesday, though, out of the southwest, and we're expecting showers to continue through Monday and Tuesday. And with those cold temperatures comes the chance of a little bit of snow across the high peaks through the uh, Stirling Ranges and possibly even the Parongra Ranges as well. Still giving it between a 30 and a 50% chance of occurring. It's a good chance, definitely the most solid chance we've had in about two years for those regions, but I wouldn't be holding your breath for it right now. It's definitely going to be touch and go. We need perfect conditions Monday morning and Monday night for snowfall to occur. It really needs to be in that Goldilocks zone. A couple of days of dry weather. We're still looking at a few showers here and there, but then a big time weather system setting itself up into the last couple of days of July. This might be a case of the forecast models going a little bit AWOL into the later parts of the forecast period. And again, we do have a little bit of congruency between other major forecast models, but it definitely does look like the EastMF and the GFS are kind of uh, <laughs> at their ends at what they're calling for at this point in time. It doesn't look like there's going to be anything too accurate on the forecast for the later parts of July for at least another couple of days. But you get the idea, more big weather systems expect to come in for the southwest of WA and we're looking at some healthy rainfall accumulations as a result especially this system coming through Sunday and Monday we're going to look at a lot of rainfall from that uh, system across the uh, Perth Hills and into the southwest corner of the state there's definitely 50 millimeters in that front pot potentially a little bit more as well definitely some good rainfall accumulations coming through Steady bit heavy rainfall, 150 millimetres expected for the, for the last two weeks of July across farm regions of the southwest. That's very good news indeed. And a lot of this rainfall also making it out in a meaningful capacity out into the wheat belt as well. 70 millimetres expected for both York and Northern. That's some great falls. And between 25 to 50 millimetres expected for the remainder of the wheat belt, with the exception of the regions around Lake King and Ravensthorpe. Generally, those areas are quite dry uh, compared to other locations in the wheat belt. But they're kind of the only locations that are not only falling behind a little bit on the rainfall accumulations, but again, kind of lacking in this weather system here. So we will hold out for a little bit of hope for the rainfall situation down there. But at this point in time, it doesn't look like there's anything too flash coming through for those regions, but definitely some good rainfall coming through, not only this weekend, but by the looks of things into the last couple of days of July as well. And just a few general smaller weather systems on the way in between those weather systems as well. So that is good news indeed. Again, the forecast remaining very good across the southwestern and the southeastern corners of the nation, especially on the rainfall side of things. Very, very happy to be able to report on this because it is just nothing but good news at this point in time. As promised, southeastern and south-central Queensland. A little bit of rainfall coming in through Thursday night. We'll see a few showers develop here and there Thursday afternoon and evening and then into Friday morning across the south-central parts of the state. Roma in June, St. George, Gundawindi, and then across towards Wollongarra will likely be seeing the, uh, kind of the worst of the showers, but it is just going to be a few showers here and there. We're not expecting anything too crazy at this point in time. A few thunderstorms could develop along the coastline through uh, Friday morning into Friday afternoon. Uh, again, this does look like an interesting forecast. We might be seeing some, seeing some heavier than expected rainfall accumulations out of this. So I will look at this on Thursday morning and really uh, pull the trigger on whether or not we're expecting some heavy showers here and there. But it looks like with this low pressure system set itself, setting itself up just offshore, we could be seeing some decent rainfall accumulations across the southeastern and the south central parts of the state through Thursday and Friday. It is going to be from showers and thunderstorms. So for the most part, rainfall will be isolated if it is heavy and the majority of locations will miss out. But it is always good to be in the know and I will revisit this in a future forecast update and see what we're actually expecting. More showers and storms firing up Sunday afternoon and evening. In fact, we might be seeing a bit of a convective thunderstorm outbreak across this part of central Queensland here outside of Jericho and Emerald. I'm not sure if we're looking at severe thunderstorms just yet. If we check, take a look at the convective available potential energy index, uh, even though these are minuscule values compared to what we'd be expecting in November or December, these are still some respectable numbers at this time of the year. There's definitely going to be some energy out there for some thunderstorms Sunday night into Monday morning. And all in all, it looks like Queensland might get convectively active, uh, not only on Friday, but also on Sunday and Monday as well. In 
in fact, some rainfall developing across the Wide Bay area through early Monday morning. Then rainfall clears from Queensland for at least a week and then returns again from a bit of a rain band coming through, making the most of some tropical moisture. I'd take this one with a very heavy pinch of salt coming in after about Saturday the 26th of July. This one looks like it could just be a little bit of late model run BS at this point in time. So we will revisit this again in a future forecast update, but I would take that with a very heavy pinch of salt at this point in time. But all in all, the key takeaways here is that there's some rainfall coming through for south central, southeastern and south uh, and uh, just general central parts of Queensland coming through Thursday night Friday and then again Sunday night into Monday and then by the looks of things after about the 26th of July onwards we won't be seeing some rainfall across these parts of Queensland. So watch out because there definitely is some rainfall especially for some areas of Queensland that don't want the rainfall at this point in time. We will keep a close eye on things and things can change and we'll likely see some developments again in the next couple of days but we will again uh, there definitely looks like there is a little bit of rainfall coming through. The forecast models have been pretty rock solid with this stuff on the forecast over the last couple of days so uh, whilst we are taking this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt yeah, I would like to say that it's more likely to occur especially the showers coming through uh, Thursday and Friday and then again Sunday and Monday they're more likely to occur than to not. It's just good news that we're not seeing any major low pressure systems on the forecast offshore from the eastern states and not at least for the next couple of weeks and there's nothing on the long range forecast either. We'll likely see a resurgence in low pressure system activity into the Coral Sea and the Tasman Sea after about the uh, 15th of August-ish. That's what the long range forecast models are suggesting at this point in time. Anyways, on that note, that's going to have to do it for today's forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it informative and preferably both. And if you have, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support lately has been much appreciated. And again, I could not run the show without the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run the show. Uh, I could not thank them enough for their support and their ongoing support is the reason this place stays afloat. So again, thank you so much to all of the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And if you want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video, click the join button down below. It's really easy, really cheap as well. And it's the best way to financially support the Cyclones Oz channel. But that is going to be all for me today. Have a great Tuesday and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.